Hello, everybody. Today, we're talking to Ruth Morley. Ruth is a plant-based hiker. You may have seen her on Facebook. She has a group called Heart Healthy Hiker, and she posts there on a pretty regular basis to share what she's doing. And we're going to talk to her today about some of the extraordinary things that she does on her hikes. She is, she follows Dr. Esselstyn, which of plant-based doctors is the strictest. And, you know, sometimes we get into these conversations about what am I going to do? I'm going to a friend's house or I'm going to a restaurant or I'm going on a trip. How am I going to eat? Well, let me tell you, Ruth takes her food with her and we're going to learn about what she takes and how she takes it and what she does. So good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Vicki. I am so happy to be here. We're glad to have you. We want to hear about your first, what, what prompted you to take that first hike? that first long hike and you hike by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, I prefer being solo. Yeah. Okay. What prompted you to do that first one? All right. We had the great fortune to live in France six years, right by the Alps and right there, that's enough to get you in them. And I did a lot of day hikes with friends, but I was also running a lot of marathons and people said, ah, oh, you run marathons. You should hike the GR5 Grand Randonnée which means a big hike um, in French. And it goes from Holland through five countries all the way down to the French Riviera. And that has nothing to do, hiking in the Alps has nothing to do with running the type of marathons I did. But I, I tried it. I started at Lake Geneva and did the southern 500 miles all through the Alps and finished down by Nice, France on the Mediterranean. And I was hooked. And the pavement was starting to take its toll with the marathons um, on my knees and hips. But the hiking, I didn't have to rush. I could set my own pace and I was just immersed in nature and I was hooked. And so I ended up doing the middle third. That was the southern third. I did the middle third in Luxembourg, Belgium and northern France uh, a year later. And a couple years later, I finished off with uh, Belgium. And I went north, uh, Belgium and the Netherlands and finished at the North Sea. Um, it was with a big old pack. I didn't know much about camping. And it's hard to camp in those areas because of all the population. So I stayed in hostels and cheap hotels and something called Friends of the Bike in Belgium and Holland, which is like, um, war what is it called? Um, sofa surfing or cold, hot showers or something where you stay in someone's home for a small fee. Mm -hmm. But I was hooked. I was hooked on that. It was just stunning. And it went from everything, the flatness of Holland, the mild hills of Belgium, Luxembourg, and then the Alps of France. So what's not to like? Well, that, it sounds amazing. And I'm sure you have some amazing stories to tell. Were you, had you already started your plant-based eating journey at that point? I was 100% opposite. We were uh, living in land, <laughs> not what you expected. Um, but see, I started in 2007 and I became plant-based years later. Okay. Um, I was living in land of cheese and there were favorite cheeses. And also they'd have a plate called charcuterie, which is like sliced salamis, all these things that cause cancer we know now. Um, and my cholesterol just went up and up and up but I removed the skin from my chicken breast and I used yeah. the heart healthy olive oil and thought, I thought, why is cholesterol going up? I'm eating healthy. Uh, so no, I, and I did not dehydrate my food then. I just ate whatever I found and had the ball doing it. Uh, even then in my forties, the aches and pains were starting and I didn't know it was from the inflammation of right. all that stuff. Yeah. Well, let's fast forward to when, when then did you decide to go to plant-based eating? Okay. When we returned to the U.S. after six years in paradise, we returned to uh, Ohio where we live and the Appalachian Trail kept calling me, calling me, calling me. And I thought that's going to be so boring. They call it the green tunnel. Uh, so boring compared to um, the Alps. But I finally, it, it's like the grandmother or grandfather of all the trails. So I had to do it. And long story short, uh, injuries, I, I never intended to through hike it, the whole thing all at once. 
uh, that's 2,200 miles. And that's just so hard on the body and the mind. And only a quarter of the people who try to through hike the Appalachian Trail succeed in one blow. Uh, so I did it, I was going to do it in two sections, but injuries, after injuries, stress fractures, I had osteopenia at the time, um, and tendonitis, which I tend to get, uh, sent me home. I don't, I don't hike on injuries. I, I respect my body too much for that. And so it ended up being four long sections, four summers, but to get back to plant-based, um, I was only 200 miles from finishing up in northern in um, Maine, which Maine and New Hampshire are the stunning, but the most challenging, very, very difficult, rocky, steep. And I had such pain in my hips. I just couldn't go on. And when I, I had to quit with 200 miles remaining. And when we did the MRI, I had stress fractures on both sides of oh, the wow. hips, of the pelvis. Um, osteopenia, you know, um, now osteoporosis actually at that time. So I'm on the sofa depressed. I've come down from mountaintop experiences literally to being on the sofa and using crutches for weeks. And then it became months. It just, it kept hurting. And my doctor said, I'm sure it's healed. And I said, no, no, it still hurts. So I'm watching everything I can find on Netflix. And so I find the game changers. I had no idea what it was about but on the front of it it was a muscular guy it looked like it was about sports i'll watch it by the end i thought there i thought wow i should do that someday i thought today someday and that's the way i do things i decide something in my heart i feel it's right and that was it that was it i didn't know quite how to do it i'd been a very bad vegan five years before i thought all you do is eliminate these bad things, the animal products and the um, meat, all, all of that. And then you'll be healthy. And my cholesterol kept going up. But I started educating myself. I told my husband I was going to do this. And he's so accepting. He said, that's fine. Okay. And COVID, COVID was happening then. Yeah. So I educated myself online. I found all these podcasts. I found books. And I just immersed myself in it. And then once I found um, Esselstyn. I, I actually heard about uh, Anne and Jane Esselstyn's conferences they were having for women up in Cleveland, just a three-hour drive from here. Uh, and this one was about cancer. And I went and I didn't know about Dr. Esselstyn's plan. So I bought, I should show you, that. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, the Bible right there. And I'm reading it and it's like, Esselstyn salt oil or sugar. Now that's getting extreme. I didn't know about that. But I thought I'm going to give it a whirl. And I I found that after eating plant-based in a healthy way, um, the inflammation, the aching, the places that felt like they were broken in my pelvis uh, no longer bothered me. And so I said, I'm going to wean myself off these crutches over the next week. And I put them aside and then used them again. And I realized I didn't even need them. I weaned myself off within the day. And my mental health, I saw a huge difference. I had been on antidepressants after coming back from the trip, from the hike, because I'd gone from mountaintop experiences to stuck on the sofa all the time. And I discovered I just did not need those antidepressants and went to my counselor and she slowly me weaned me off of those. Um, you do have to really be in touch with your body and with your mind um, with these kind of things. And so I just, I, I learned more as time went on about the brain gut connection and how I think it's the vagus nerve that connects them and how important it is that your gut be healthy and not be processing these foreign inflammatory foods. And uh, yeah, I just really discovered that. Um, as I dug into Dr. Esselstyn's plan more and got more into the SOS free, uh, salt oil, sugar free, it became even more dramatic, just feeling good. And my husband joined me in it being COVID. I said, you're welcome. I can't handle meat anymore. You are welcome to buy it yourself and prepare it yourself. Uh, but here's how I'm cooking. And while I was at 
uh, the conference, uh, Jane and Ann's conference, I bought their cookbook and I used uh, recipes in the in Esselstyn's regular regular book in there. Um, right. And he said, "No, I'll just eat while you're cooking." And he discovered within a week it didn't hurt to get out of bed anymore. Mm -hmm. He felt great. And so he's he's a triathlete, and he has just really we both feel like we're 20 years younger. It's great. Every now and then we get a reminder. We live in a four-story home. <laughs> but yeah, it, even if it didn't make any difference, even if I would die in five years of heart attack, which I don't expect, Bill can tell him at the service, she died happy. She felt there great. Go. There yeah. you go. There's something to be said for that. Yeah. Let's talk about your food and a typical day on the trail. Like, okay. what, what is your what is your typical eating day like on the trail? And keep in mind now, everybody, she's carrying all her food with her. Yes. So. Yes. All right. I knew I couldn't carry fresh food. It weighs too much. So I learned how to dehydrate food. And I've just gone to town with it. I found a cookbook by a man called The Backpacking Chef. And he has a wonderful website, thebackpackingchef.com, and two cookbooks, Recipes for Adventure. And this is a day's worth of food. And in here is my breakfast. I make, I this is just what I have at home every day too, but not dehydrated. And it's oats, flaxseed, I, Dr. Esselstyn wants his patients, his followers to have cooked greens or cruciferous vegetables or beets six times a day, a small serving. On the trail, I can handle three to four. I can't get it all in. But in here, there are um, dehydrated, uh, there's dehydrated cauliflower because that is technically is cruciferous. So I've got three vegetables. I've got my oats. I've got three vegetables chopped sweet potato, which I adore, my favorite vegetable, chopped zucchini, because why not? <laughs> and, um, and chopped, um, let's see, sweet potato, zucchini and cauliflower. And then I have one fruit sliced and dehydrated bananas and dried chickpeas. I, I'm always looking for calories. I lose uh, five pounds typically, typically on a multi-week trail. Um, but that's very common. Many people lose less. Uh, lose more. I how, have, much does, how much does that little bag weigh? About a pound and a half. Uh, a day's worth of food is a pound and a half. Okay. And That's I'll carry usually about four days worth um, until I get a shipment from home. Bill mails these to me. I also have cinnamon, powdered vanilla, and Esselstyn wants his people to anoint their greens with vinegar. And so I found these little packets on Amazon. So I also have lunch, my lunch, my dinner, those can be curries or tomato base. We don't eat nuts when we follow Esselstyn's plan or avocados um, or coconut or the things that have high oil, but we can eat chestnuts, which actually are fruit. Didn't know that. I looked that up. But they're soft when you order them through Amazon and they would spoil on the trail. So I dehydrate them and they are crunchy like nuts. And that's very satisfying. Little high calorie, which I want on the trail. So here's my dinner, red lentil chili, grain and a green with some balsamic in there. I put greens in all my meals. Lunch is one of Chef AJ's nutrient rich potatoes oh my gosh potatoes cauliflower parsnips um plant milk and nutritional yeast so yummy and so i add to it more of those vegetables whole and also some grains i just pack as much as i can in there i have four snacks lined up each day my favorite are banana um oatmeal cookies and they they start simple i've learned the trick from chef aj just oats and mashed banana ripe bananas but i thought you know, and uh, i love the powdered vanilla and the um powdered vanilla and cinnamon but i thought you know why not put more in there we make zucchini bread we make carrot cake 
So those are in here. Sometimes these are redder because I put beets. They're beet based, and that's a screen of greens. I mix. I make them, and I put them right in the dehydrator. It takes about ten hours, but I don't have to play around with them. I switch the trays around once or twice, and that's it. Um, I make my own. This is fruit, dried fruit. We don't eat dried fruit with Esselstyn because it's such a burst of sugar. But this is the only way I can get it, and I nurse it all day. So I'm not eating all of that. I put oatmeal in there just because I love oatmeal so much. <laughs> and I don't wet it down. I just eat it as is. I make my own trail mix. These are rice cakes crumbled just for the fun of it. I love rice cakes. And I've got um, dehydrated mushrooms I've soaked in balsamic vinegar for the taste and jicama. All of these things are dehydrated. Uh, red pepper strips, um, uh, broccoli, always get those greens in. And I think those are my snacks for the day. Some, and again, I use these as a snack. Sometimes I take uh, prepackaged dehydrated from Amazon sweet potatoes because they're softer and I can eat them more easily. The one when you dehydrate them, you really need to rehydrate them. But as a snack, I just have a, a little bag of uh, commercially made. But that's the only that is the only commercially made thing I have. That and the chickpeas. Everything and, else. So you're I'm eating these all room temperature. All you're, room temperature. So you're not heating anything up. You're just putting yeah. water in it and yeah. rehydrating yeah. it, eating it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to use a little stove and a pot, but I got tired of carrying the canister of oil, gas. Mm -hmm. And this is lighter weight. I just put the food in, goes to about here. And then I add enough water all the way up to here. And it takes several hours. So when I'm uh, after dinner, I'll put my oatmeal in here and put the water in. Um, I put all of my food on the trail in a bare canister. It has screws that you unscrew with a quarter. And I have quarters everywhere in my pants pockets in my backpack i'm not going to get caught without uh, without a quarter i got it yeah and i put that far from my tent along with this and in the morning it's ready and after i eat it i put lunch in and let it rehydrate in the back of my pack uh while hiking in the morning and lunch is ready and then i start dinner so that's my cooking i've got a long handled spoon hikers love their gear so i can get to my food i love my food. And as I observe the other hikers eating things like uh, spam, honestly, I was paleo during the beginning of the Appalachian Trail. And I, I ate, I dehydrated and I thought I was eating healthy, but I ate spam. I ate a lot of meat then. Um, yeah, they just, they, they feel it. there's no rules. When you're hiking, you need calories, eat whatever. I feel like I am making so many demands of my body. It deserves the best. And as Dr. Clapper says, I believe my body's never not looking. Yeah, he does say like, that. I love that. He one. says that. I love it. It's mm -hmm. Christmas. I didn't cheat. I don't cheat on this diet. Cheating well, would be cheating, cheating me. Yourself. Yeah. Cheating yeah. myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. How, ha how heavy is that pack that you carry? Because you're carrying everything that you need to sleep. Everything yeah. you need to eat, you're carrying your water, yeah. you're carrying, I assume, trash until yes. you can dispose of it properly. So yes. when on an average day, when you start in the morning, your first day of your hike, how heavy mm -hmm. is that pack? They count. First of all, you look at the pack weight, they call it. And that is what does everything in your pack weigh minus the consumables, the foods and the water and the toilet paper. <laughs> which I do go through. I curse the fiber we eat very often on the trail, I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm not eliminating it. It will, you try to get it 15 to 20 pounds, mine's 17 pounds. Okay. Um, and then once you add the water, I will carry between one to two liters of water, depending on how far it is to the next water stop. Um, and each liter weighs 2.2 pounds. So I right. can be carrying, you know, four and a half pounds, of water. My food is usually, as I said, four days worth. So that's about six pounds. So it it's around, it can be 25 pounds. Uh, wow. But hooray for the Florida Trail. That's the elevation gain. I love it. 
<laughs> well, since you brought up the Florida Trail, let's yeah. talk about the Florida Trail because that's yeah. you've already done one part of it. Yeah. And yes. how far are you going? Where are you going? Let's talk about the Florida Trail. Okay. The Florida Trail, normally people, when they hike the whole thing, they start down south at uh, Big Cypress National Preserve, National Preserve in um, the Everglades and go north. And the trail itself goes up. You can either, you can choose. Uh, you can go east or west uh, side of Lake Okeechobee, and then you keep going north and you can choose east or west of Orlando. And then once you get a little further north, uh, the trail goes left and goes down the panhandle and finishes across Pensacola Bay from Pensacola at Fort Pickens. So I started uh, January 4th, I believe it was last of this year down south. And that's when people start if they're going to through hike it. I don't through hike usually. Through hike means end to end. I like section hiking because right. I want to enjoy myself. So I'm doing three big section hikes and I finished uh, in the area of, do you pronounce it o Oviedo? Av Oviedo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Oviedo. Okay. Um, I lived, I did 350 miles. The most challenging and the most rewarding was Big Cypress. I'd never walked in swamps before. We had come and done car drives in Florida and walked on boardwalks, but I'm walking in water, I would say in Big Cypress, 25% um, of the time, and it might just get your shoes wet or it may even get your thighs wet. You may be that deep. And you have to take it slowly because of a lot of very, they call it soul sucking mud, not just mood, mud, uh, boot sucking. And it was the most challenging, but the most amazing. I'd never seen such a landscape. And then I also loved uh, the Kissimmee Prairie area. I uh, just it's endless, pretty. endless, just beautiful. Uh, so yeah, very excited about that. I I love the Florida Trail. Um, some people call it it's a pearl necklace, a beautiful pearl necklace held together with brown twine, and the brown twine are the road walks. They're working, the Florida Trail Association is working very hard to eliminate walking on roads, which are usually quiet country roads, but sometimes busier. Uh, yeah. Purchasing land or getting agreements with agricultural uh, owners. So, yeah, yeah but I, I just, I'm fascinated by it. And I contrast this, I'll get back to Florida Trail, but last August and early September, I hiked 500 miles in the Rockies on the Colorado Trail. and it talk about a year to go from the Rockies to Florida. Well, actually, I started the year with the Florida Trail down south and then the Rockies and now back to the Florida Trail. I feel so fortunate. So yeah, you've, fortunate. Changed, you've changed elevation considerably. Yes, elevation. <laughs> I know. The average there was, um, I believe it was 10,000 feet. I yeah, got up the average in the swamp was zero <laughs> yeah <laughs> one exactly. foot yeah but so this year i'll be doing further i did 350 miles last year 450 this year it just plays out well and i'll finish off uh south of tallahassee at saint mark's uh, on an estuary and then um a year from now i will finish the trail 350 miles to fort pickens and just because it's there i have to go back to Big Cypress and go south. And uh, this Jan December of 2024, next year, I'm going to hike the 200 miles down to Key West because it's my ultimate goal to go from Key West to the Canadian border. And there are routes, wow. connectors. I've already done the Appalachian Trail. So I, I have to connect the Florida Trail and um, Appalachian Trail. And there are established routes for doing that. And then it's 150 more north of Katahdin, the mountain at the north of the AT. But Esselstyn all the way, I, 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 am, I had the good fortune when hiking in Ohio um, on the Buckeye Trail, I knew that the Esselstyns lived near to the trail. It was only two miles away. So I contacted him through his secretary on his, uh, his, uh, uh, his website. Thank you. So, um, and anyway, they had me for lunch. No, they didn't have me. They invited me <laughs> because they don't eat meat. Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, understand. They invited me for lunch <laughs> and I was able to show them my trail food. And just, I, it was, I, I couldn't believe it. 
And I'm sure he applauded you greatly. Oh, yes. They're I, just he hears, so he hears nice. from people all the time that have a hard time going to a restaurant yeah. or going next door or going to a hotel. And here yeah. you are hiking the wilderness and you're eating on plan. Yeah. There's, I love good quotes. And they say, those who are interested do what is convenient. Those who are committed do whatever is necessary. You yeah. know? And I can, I can stay home, but if I want to hike, this is what I do. Or I go back to that way of eating and I live five more years because I have genetic predisposition and some blockage in the left anterior descending artery. I mean, so no, I'm but doing what it. Would be worse, what would be worse than living five, only living five more years would be living 20 more years, but being unhealthy for 50 yeah. years. Yeah. That yeah. would be yeah. a scary part. And that's what some people do. Yeah. No, I just to satisfy those taste buds. Yeah, I plan on celebrating my 90th birthday in uh, how many years? I'm not good with that. In 19 years, uh, wearing my hiking boots and going out. I got it. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like you might want to shorten the hikes by then, but I'll shorten them. But I hope I can still climb in and out of the tent. I do yoga every day, so Yeah. yeah. You know, I think we all know the importance of being out in nature. Just, I think intuitively people just like being outdoors, but there really are some health and mental and emotional benefits to being out in nature. Can you talk a little bit about that? Boy, I agree 100% with that. Um, I like to go to the gym a couple times a week when I'm at home just to use the weights and see people I know, but I never use the treadmill unless it's horrendous weather looking out i would i think why are people looking out at the window at nature you need to be out there even almost despite the weather uh there's so much we get from the trees uh from the sun vitamin d of course and there's even some i heard a podcast recently a scientist was talking about it, scientific research has shown that there are certain rays from the sun, wave, sun rays, I don't know how to put it, that come going through that atmosphere at dusk and dawn that benefits your body and your mind in so many ways. And it penetrates clothing, it penetrates bone, it goes right through your body. Um, some kind of ultraviolet rays. I'm not sure, can't remember what it is. But he's, they said, don't worry if you can't get out at noon and get your vitamin D that we all want, certainly. But you're getting so much if you're walking the dog at those hours. And the same man said how important it is to be around trees, not only for the sounds and the smells that we do benefit from and the feel of it and the nature under your feet, hopefully, you know, on a trail, maybe. Um, the light rays hit the, the tree's leaves and come to you. It, it's not, I mean, even on a cloudy day, you benefit from something the tree's leaves do to magnify the impact they have on you. It certainly changes my attitude and my plan, you know, New Year's resolutions. In 2024, I plan on making sure I walk outside every day. And I'm not setting, it's got to be at least around one block. We live in a very walkable neighborhood, not just to the end of the driveway, but I've got to be out there because when I, I'm a different person when I walk in that door than the one that walked out. So yeah, it, it's extremely important. Uh, working out at the gym is great, but if nothing more, park as far as you can from the door and walk outside. So I know one of the things that you're very proud of is your age and still continuing to do this kind of moving mm -hmm. and walking and the fact that you do it on your own, you're independent. So what kind of advice would you give to somebody our age, because we're mm -hmm. similar in age, that mm -hmm. want to get started doing such a thing? What what do they need to do? What do they need to prepare? And what would okay. they do? I'm I love to give advice. Um what I'm going to say can also apply to anything else you want to do in life, especially if you're thinking about becoming plant-based. I mean, I am just 150% uh, enthusiastic about eating plant-based. And I just want everybody to, to remember that a, if you have a goal or you have dreams, 
you've got to pull it, put them into reality. They say a goal, again, I love quotes, a goal is a plan. A goal without a plan is just a wish. Yep. You know, people can be motivated, but motivation is an emotion. And emotions, you know, if you are committed, that allows you to show up regardless of what happens. But yes. motivation, so many people tell me, oh, I'm so inspired. I'm so motivated. That is fleeting. It's a great start. It's it's like when you light a match, it goes, but you've got to keep that flame going. So I suggest to people, don't dream about doing something. Don't delay. Decide to do it and get out your calendar or your phone and say, I'm doing it. Here's when I'm doing it. And make a decision and envision it and commit to it with a time frame. So that's what I've done with these hikes. You know, when I decided Florida Trail, I looked, and I, I studied it, I planned it, I looked to see uh, how long it was and what the terrain was like, how long would it take me to do it. The most important thing to keep in mind in making any plans like this is to know your why. Why am I doing this? What is my goal? For me, I'm plant-based because of health. Mom had five-way heart bypass. She still died a few years later of a heart attack. I don't want to follow that plan. Uh, some people, it's for the animals. Some people, it's the environment. And I've moved that way. You've got to remember your why. I have a very dear friend who has forgotten her why. And so she struggles and eats whatever. Um, and you need to remember your own preferences, the way you are, I am able to make a decision and then boom, I do it. Some people for becoming plant-based say, okay, I'm gonna start with eliminating eggs. And then maybe a week or two later, dairy, and just inch into it. And that works for them, hopefully, but they won't see the results as quickly. And Included in the food packs that my husband sends uh, is a manila envelope, and I put all the plastic bags that my food came in, the little freezer Ziplocs, uh, quart size, and I reuse them and use them over and over until they don't seal properly because I just, I love our earth, and I'm not going to bury this somewhere in the land until they've served me well. Um, and once on the trail or starting this new way of eating or a new venture, you need to persevere. So you plan, you prepare, and you persevere. Um, on the trail, that might be um, having lower mileage. That's what I do. Uh, I don't, many people hike 20, 25 miles a day on a trail. I'll do 15, top, 20 tops if it's flat and easy. Um, I just, and with the plant-based eating, persevering. I got a lot out of a recent episode. You had interview with Brian Hart, how to survive the holidays. And I thought, oh, Ruth, you've been doing this four years, you know, uh, you've got it. No, I use some of his, te his techniques at a neighborhood gathering. It really, yeah. So that's really persevering. Yeah. Um, challenges will come no matter what you're doing, but if it was easy, everybody would do it. Well, yeah. sitting home and watching television can create challenges sometimes. Yeah. And you can slip getting in the bathtub. I'd rather slip in a swamp. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you about the bottles in the back, because I bet we have some people that think you have all kinds of olive oil back there. And I know better. Yeah. It looks like it, you have quite a variety of vinegar. It is vinegar from the Olive Tap, which is Ohio based. Um, just delicious hickory smoke, fruit flavored. Because my oatmeal has um, cauliflower in it, I, I need to activate the nitrates in there. Uh, I put in, I have like a orange vinegar that I put in it or raspberry, uh, just a tablespoon to activate it. And that's my sweetener. I don't even use milk. Um, that's amazing. It, yeah, it's, I love that. I, I spend a fortune on vinegar. <laughs> and so when, yeah, it does start, look like when are you, when are you going to start packing for your Florida trip? Well, right now the dining room, which we seldom use, but it's kind of like my big office um, all across the buffet. I'm just throwing everything I'm going to take on top of there, but I've got a list in my mind um, and I will pack it the night before. Uh, yeah. But I, my backpack it's organized is, now. Yeah. I'm organizing it. I know I've been ordering gear. You always, some things break and yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, and I know you you blog. You're going to be blogging about your Florida trail trip. So you yeah. want to tell us about that. And I know Kathy will put links to the blog and to your Facebook group and all of that in the show notes. But tell us about your blog and, and uh, how people can follow you while you're on the Florida trail. Happily. My blog is the trek t r e k dot c o um, author or i'm sorry dot c o slash author slash ruth dash morley and it will be down there and i wanted a way that people could contact me more quickly than just through that and more privately so i started a facebook page and i've really enjoyed that um heart healthy hiking heart healthy hiking and um, I will get to it as best I can when on the trail. I try to guard carefully my uh, cell phone usage. I take pictures with it, but I have two battery packs to charge it. But sometimes I'll be out there five days and that can. But when I have a zero day, they call it a rest day with zero miles hiked in town every fifth day. I will get to that and answer people on my Facebook. It, it's been a lot of fun uh, to share recipes and keep them up to date with what I'm doing on trails just locally so i would well, really welcome fun people. for you but it's fun for us following you also oh thank you yeah, it's i turned i did turn it into a private group because um public i was getting a bit of spam and i guess that's what they call it anyway it was things that were not welcome and so they just have to answer a simple pretty simple simple mm -hmm. questions and get the stamp of approval you get the stamp of approval. Very yeah. Good. Anything else you'd like to add before we uh, close this out? Um, this is the one life we have, and it's the one body we have. And so, take care of that body the best way you can. It's we. Should, I'm so grateful for it. And this is the one life you have. You can't relive the days. You only have today. And just be bold and follow your dreams. And so you're never too it. old. To you're start. never too old. Dr. Benjamin Spock, the well-known pediatrician that my mother raised me by, he changed in his late 80s to plant-based right. and advised mothers to do the same with their children. They called it vegan, I think, then. Um, it's never too late for quality of life. Right. I, I hope I live too. longer. I, I hope think I Dr. Clapper says that, too. It's never yeah. too late to start. No, I hope to live longer, but I just don't want my kids to have to take care of me. And I just quite li literally will probably fall over a cliff. <laughs> and that, let's not talk. Let's not say that. Let's just no, not I, it's life is so worth living. You won't be falling over any cliffs in Florida. No, I'm safe that. there. I'm safe there. You're safe from cliffs here. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ruth, we really appreciate your time. And I know we used a little bit more of it than we had planned to. But I hope everybody gets some good benefit from this. And uh, we'll maybe we'll talk again sometime. Maybe we'll talk the next time you get back on that Florida trail. I really hope so. I hope Thank so. You. Thank you. It's, I'm Thank so you. glad I found Chat and Chew More Plants. I'm so, I don't know how I found you, but I'm so glad. We're I glad did. you found us too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.